two, two, check one, two. Yes. Let me try that again. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to a special meeting. This is a special meeting of the Tree Committee Design Review Historic Preservation Committee. It's Tuesday, March 1st at 6 p.m. May I get a roll call from staff, please? Yes. Commissioner Blattner. Oh, you're, you're muted, and I'm trying to allow you to start your video. Commissioner Blattner? Well, she's here. Uh, uh, com committee member Meserve, if you're on as an attendee, can you please raise your hand? I see you now. I'm going to promote you. You should be able to... Start his video. Uh, committee member Meserve. You'll need to unmute yourself. But he's here. I'm going to stay here for him. Commissioner Amar. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. And Chair Cormany. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, moving on. First off, we'd like to review the agenda for today's meeting. Um, I'd like to review the agenda as presented. Can I have a motion on the agenda, please? I move that we uh, use the this evening's agenda as presented. I second. Okay. I'll do a roll call vote. Com uh, Commissioner Blattner? Commissioner Mazur? Can you um, test your microphone? We'll work on that in a moment. Okay. Commissioner Amar? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Cormany? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. I'd like to take a little bit of time to mention that this is a bit of a different structure for us. This is a hybrid meeting. So we're both doing in person and Zoom. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for those who are participating. The number of different ways you can participate uh, with Zoom, you can use the Zoom application, our ID for joining the Zoom app is the meeting is 980-299-59654. It's a teleconferencing application, so you can join by Zoom and pre present comments that way. We also have the ability to uh, use a smartphone to call in if you'd like, and there's a number you can call, or a regular phone for that matter as well. The number is 669-900-9128. 
Uh, if you're using a computer or a smartphone and you want to make a comment, you'll have to use the raise your hand feature. If you're using a regular phone, you can do star 9, and that creates the same kind of a signal for the staff that can raise your hand. As always, with any of these meetings or combined or any other meetings, uh, public comment at sonomacity.org is a way to present your comments via email. And we do have public in the room tonight to present comments in person. If you plan to attend the, uh, the meeting tonight in order to make a public comment, can we please limit those comments to three minutes per comment so we can get through this? Um, is there any uh, late correspondence from staff? Yes, all the late correspondence that was received was uploaded to the Document Center on Great. the city's website. Thank you. And the consent calendar? Uh, there's no consent calendar because tonight. It's a special meeting. Okay. So with that, we'll move right into the agenda. Item was 5.1. Uh, this is the action of the Planning Commission to design review about a demolition and landscape plan for a property on 5th Street West. Can we get a staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Cormany. <clears throat> Back in um, January of last year, the Housing Crisis Act was uh, went into effect, also known as SB 330. The bill intended to streamline housing projects that are subject to design review under local zo zoning laws. Key, a key element of SB 330 is that it limits the number of public meetings to no more than five. And uh, this special joint tree committee, DRHPC meeting, will count as one of, one of the five public meetings. A housing development project, also known as a preliminary application, uh, was submitted in April of last year. And in May of last year, the Planning Commission held a study session for a proposed 15-unit residential development on a 1.5 acre parcel located at 19910 5th Street West. The first part of the project um, involves a demolition. So the property is not located within the city's historic overlay and not listed on the local historic resource survey or the state register, the national register. However, under the development code, demol demolition of any structure over 50 years old is subject to review and approval by this commission. A copy of the existing site plan uh, is on the next screen. The proposed project um, involves the demolition of the existing 960 square foot unoccupied one-story residence and a 100 square foot a detached auxiliary building. They were both constructed around 1940. Applications for um, a demolition permit shall be subject to the review and approval of this commission. And in this case, since the Planning Commission will review the vesting tentative subdivision map and condominium plan, this commission will make a recommendation to the Planning Commission for approval or de denial of the demolition. So according to the State Office of Historic Preservation, buildings over 50 years old may be historically significant, even if not listed on a state or national register. Uh, pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act, a resource is considered historically significant if the resource meets any one of the following criteria. One is associated with events that have made a significant contribution to the broad patterns of California's history and cultural heritage is associated with the lives of persons important in our past, embodies the distinctive characteristics of a type, period, region, or method of construction, or represents the work of an important creative individual, or possesses high artistic value, and has yielded, or may be likely to yield, information important in prehistory or history. Given the age of, of the building, in April of last year, the applicant commissioned Evans DeShazo to prepare a historic resource evaluation of the property to determine if it is historically significant. The historic resource evaluation determined that the project area containing the house and the auxiliary building and the associated, associated landscape does not meet the eligibility requirements for listing on the California Register of Historic Resources and is not currently listed on any national, state, or local register of historic resources. Therefore, 
the property containing the buildings is not, uh, does not meet the definition of a historic resource, and any future proposed project will not impact built environment historic resources when the pro within the project area, and staff concurs with the conclusion of the historic resource evaluation. Because the structure is not a historic resource, demolishing it would not have a significant effect on the environment, and the project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. So the city's regulations for demolition permits rely um, heavily on the criteria for listing on the California Register. If this commission determines that the, res the residence does not qualify as a historic resource, and can make the required findings, then the demolition can be approved by the Design Review Commission, but in this case, you'd be making a recommendation to the Planning Commission. If you, you can also make a recommendation to the Planning Commission that the building not be demolished until building permits for the replacement structure have been issued, and that the inside and outside of the residence be photo documented and submitted to the Sonoma League for Historic Preservation and the City of Sonoma. The design review application for the development of nine single family residences and three duplex buildings containing six units. So for projects subject to discretionary review by the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission shall be responsible for reviewing and acting upon the project site plan, building massing and elevation concepts, and review by the Dis <coughs> Design Review and Historic Preservation Commission shall be limited to elevation details, colors and materials, landscaping, lighting, and site details. So the project's now before this commission for consideration of building elevations, exterior colors and materials, lighting, bike parking, and landscaping. Three elevation schemes have been proposed a farmhouse, craftsman, and mission. Exterior colors um, were illustrated on uh, sheets A24 and 25, and the applicant will um, display color samples when he gives his presentation. This is color scheme number one. Here's color scheme number two. Color scheme number three. So elevation A for the farmhouse. This is elevation B for the crafts, craftsman and C mission. This is elevation B craftsman and C mission. Elevation B craftsman. Elevation C mission. I wish um, Commissioner Randolph was here because she likes all the pictures. <laughs> Elevation A farmhouse and C mission. Elevation A farmhouse. Elevation C mission. Elevation B craftsman. Elevation A farmhouse. And this is the uh, enhanced corner porch for unit number 10. Elevation B Craftsman. Three new lightings are, lighting fixtures are proposed. 10 each district collection, 8 each Callahan collection, 3 each Westport collection. Five new 15 foot tall light poles are proposed and the proposed lighting is consistent with the lighting standards. Here's a picture of the three different lighting fixtures. Six foot tall wooden fencing uh, would, be in would be installed along the perimeter of the property. Staff would note that the fencing in the front and street side setback areas is limited to three and a half feet and 30 inches at intersections of streets, alleys, driveways within traffic safety site areas. New uh, multifamily residential and commercial development requires a bicycle parking uh, the amount and location is determined on a case-by-case -case basis and 
The applicant has stated that the bicycle parking will be provided in the individual unit garages and staff is recommending that the tree committee and the design review and historic preservation commission consider recommending the planning commission consider requiring four bicycle parking spaces in a central area for guests and the general public to park bicycles and i just note that the bicycle community does support the inver inverted u style bicycle racks with regard to development code consistency the applicant is proposing a vesting tentative subdivision map and condominium plan so the minimum lot area requirements shall not apply to condominium and condominium conversions plan development townhouses zero lot line and similar projects but what that means is that here's a preliminary site plan the setbacks are taken for the, um, the project as a whole, not for the individual units, as they'll all be on one uh, lot. The project is consistent with the development code with regard to setbacks, with the exception of the floor area ratio, the maximum FAR in the medium density zone is 0.45, and the proposed project has a resulting FAR of 0.5. The project does not meet the requirement, but the applicant will be exercising a right under the state density bonus law to utilize a waiver or concession for exceeding the FAR as they are providing 20% of the project as affordable housing. With regard to the tree ordinance, an arborist report was prepared evaluating all 54 trees on the project site, which included a variety of species native to the site, mm -hmm. including coast live oak, valley oak, and black oak. Species that are non-native to California include blue gum, silk tree, English walnut, black walnut, black lotus, and oleander. The arborist report states that 55 trees are recommended for removal due to development impacts, poor health, and poor species characteristics. The Tree Committee and the Design Review and Historic Preservation Commission should make a recommendation to the Planning Commission with regard to accepting the arborist report and the tree replacement ratio, which will also be included in the draft con conditions of approval. And this is the part where the, the Tree Committee will come in. So um, when we have arborists that come before, arborist report that go before the tree committee, um, part of um, their review is um, recommending a tree replacement program. And typically it's a one to one ratio and a 15 gallon box size. For each, each six inches of tree diameter uh, removed. However, uh, occasionally the tree committee will recommend lesser amount of trees for a larger box size and um, the development <clears throat> uh, if the development site is inadequate to accommodate all the tree replacements uh, then uh, trees may be planted on public property with the approval of public works director or there's also uh, an option for an in lieu payment of $100 for every 15 gallon replacement tree and the tree um, tr tree committee understands all these provisions and so they'll t talk amongst themselves and with you about the tree replacement program. The project is subject to the water efficient landscape ordinance and a proposed pallet listing proposed species and planting was provided for reference. In addition, the water budget calculations prepared by the landscape architect demonstrate compliance with the water efficient landscape ordinance and the calculations indicate that the proposed landscaping would utilize uh, just over 180 gallons or 93% of the associated annual water budget allotment of 195,000 gallons. And a landscape plan consistent with the municipal code will be considered by the planning commission at a future date. And here's a drawing of the, um, the landscape plan. 
And with regard to discussion of project issues, staff recommends the applicant reach out again to the Sinesta Villas Homeowners Association to attempt to address issues prior to moving forward to the Planning Commission. There are certain findings the Design Review Historic Preservation Commission and the Tree Committee must make in order to approve the demolition and the design review. And staffs recommend, staff is recommending that the Tree Committee and Design Review and Historic Preservation Commission take possible action to recommend the Planning Commission approve the demolition landscape plan and design review applications, including any recommendations you may have and that concludes staff's report, finally. Thank you. You can turn me off. Thank you, Wendy. That was very comprehensive, and I understand that takes a great deal of effort to do that. Um, are there commission questions for staff? And I would note that uh, for the tree uh, committee members, if you have um, questions related to the staff report, now is the time to ask staff. If you have general comments, uh, those will be made after the close of public hearing. Okay. I do have a question. In seeing this application, I was trying to determine that they're listed as single family homes. Are these condominiums or for the, the holding? What's the title structure? A condominium is? plan. So these are for sale to others is rather yes. than apartments. Thank you. And that, that's my understanding, and the applicant can clarify if he okay. wants to provide some more information on that. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff at this time? Either in here or I guess online with Zoom with the Tree Commission. Yes, the way this will work is um, we'll open it up to the public comment. The applicant will have an opportunity to speak and then we'll allow the members of the public to speak and the chair can determine if you're going to um, include a time limit on that or not. Okay. And we'll do public comment from the members of the public that are present first and then we'll go out to anyone who's on the Zoom. Great. Thank you. Appreciate the clarity. Is the application present? Would you like to yes, come and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your project? Yes, sir. No problem. Try to hopefully make sure I don't have any technical difficulties here as we boot up. Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for your time here. It feels good to really be back here to have the opportunity to present stuff in person now rather than just always on Zoom. I echo, I think that's a lot of the other uh, fellow commissioners, planning commissioners have the same sentiment as well. So it's really nice to see you all this evening. Uh, my name is Trent Sanson. I'm here on behalf of DeNova Homes. Uh, if you're not familiar with our company, we're a private family owned development home building company based out of Concord, California. Uh, about not too far away here and whether it's infamous or famous for it depending on <laughs> uh, public sentiment these days we have recent experience in developing communities here in the city of Sonoma most recently just actually across the street from this property in question with our Mockingbird Lane subdivision um, which was a different density range and but another general plan consistent project that we've completed and are actually very proud of on our end and also on the other side of town off of West Spain Street showing our range and diversity of the densities that we've been able to create for Sonoma uh, is our Oliva Apartments project off of uh, six five, at 655 West Spain Street which is a 30 unit infill apartment community. So needless to say, we're very excited to be, have the opportunity to be back and continue to develop and create new homes in the city of Sonoma. We're very proud of the work product that we deliver and are very eager to hear your questions and comments and feedback here this evening that I'm more than happy to help address. In, in addition to any questions or comments from the public. Um, Wendy, as mentioned before, did an excellent job with her staff report, so a lot of this might overlap and be supplementary, but just wanted to help provide it as just some additional context from our end as well. Um, we originally started our endeavors on this property with meeting at the staff level with the Project Advisory Committee, or the PAC, back in March 18, 2021. So in addition to the lead time preparing for that meeting to where we are to here today, we've been working on our project here for now about a year. Uh, our SB 330 preliminary application, as Wendy mentioned, was submitted on April 29th, 28th uh, of last year, which with that new state law in place, locks in the development standards at the time the project was submitted at that point in time. Uh, we had a subsequent workshop with the Planning Commission in the community on May 13th last year. And then based on the feedback from the commission and the community that attended that meeting, uh, worked on modifying our plans that is now before you here this evening, uh, where we submitted our application on August 9th to our staff uh, deemed our application complete on September 13th. 
Just for a quick reference, here's an aerial about the one and a half acre property. Uh, it is a very uniquely shaped property that has posed some challenges to us. I'm not even gonna bore you with probably two dozen different site plan and iterations we worked on before our last workshop and where we got to where we are today. Uh, due to the geometry of the site, it creates quite some unique challenges. In addition to the drainage easement and the ditch on the eastern boundary we need to stay out of, which we think we've done a, a fairly good job of working and incorporating into our plans. Uh, while providing other frontage improvements on both uh, street frontages on the property. These are just some snapshots from the city's um, uh, zoning map confirming the RM density range where with the maximum of 11 to the acre, uh, the zoning and land use would allow for a maximum of 17 units on the property, but just through our site planning efforts felt that was getting way too constrained. So we've come up with a 15. This is a snapshot from the land use. And then this is just a reference to the um, affordable housing um, standards at the time our SB330 application was submitted. Uh, with our 20% provision here, we'll be providing one low income, one median income, and one moderate income home, with the rest of them being market rate. Um, so there's a wide range of the income levels there through, through those three deed restricted units. And this is a snapshot from the city's housing element, showing that it is a housing opportunity site and actually ironically on its own was anticipating a realistic development potential of 15 units on the property which we have been able to achieve with our plans today. This is the site plan that we presented to the Planning Commission back in May. So I just wanted to show just the similarities and the differences from where we were to where we are today. Um, there was lots of dialogue and discussion uh, with the Planning Commission during that workshop, but the main takeaway were two key points. Uh, where there was feedback on wanting to see more diversity in housing types to include some du duplex units and try to create a much more central um, community oriented private open space common open space area that would serve this community of for sale homes which would all have its own HOA be private infrastructure owned and maintained by the future homeowners association so with those two key points in mind we got to work with our design team who are also here on the zoom call as well if for some reason I'm not answer able to answer any questions uh, we came up to where we are today, where we were able to come up with two different duet type buildings to add that diversity there and try to cluster things a little bit more to the west towards 5th Street to create that opportunity in the middle of the property where we are able to include a common open space area rather than previously tucked into the corner, which was kind of inaccessible and visible to the, to the rest of the project. And we're able to maintain all the setback requirements and everything as required in the zoning code while also being very cognizant that we don't want to have any drainage go to the south or to the east and impact the existing facilities in our neighbors at Sinesta Villas. So there will be a short two to three foot retaining wall around the perimeter of the property to direct drainage into our own facilities, treat it in the C3 areas and put it out into the existing city storm drain system. Uh, Wendy did a great job showing all of our architecture, but this is just a quick snapshot of the various themes and elevations and color schemes spread throughout. And I just wanted to show a snapshot of the various range with the duets and the detached housing types that we're proposing with hummingbird cottages ranging from about 1300 square foot up to about 1900 square foot. And I know there's been a lot of public comments about how this project is too similar to our mockingbird uh, lane subdivision across the street. But I just wanted to point out for the record that our average square footage there, not including the ADUs was about 1950 uh, square feet. So our largest home here is actually smaller than the average from that project across the street. And then also with this project, due to the nature of the higher density um, allowed here in the zoning and the general plan, there are no ex accessory dwelling units here as well, which at that project, we were conditioned to provide 12 accessory dwelling units for the 20 homes in that project, uh, where they were about 750 square feet, which really boosted the square footage is there. So from a design standpoint, these homes are much more attainable by design by just bringing that average square footage range down from the top down. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Wendy, excellent job again on the thorough and detailed staff report. I'll be here to answer any questions or comments for the commissioner or the public. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, at this time, is there any questions from the commission, either design review or tree commission for the applicant? Wendy, anybody online? Not from the tree committee. No comments from the tree committee. Okay. So at this time, I guess we're going to open up this to public comment. Is that correct? Yes. If you're
present would like to, well, how you, do you want to do the Zoom first? Or you want to do in person? What in person you? first, please. Okay. If you're in person and would like to make a comment, can you please step up to the podium and uh, please limit your comments to three minutes if you can. Please state your name, please. Yes, my name is Kim Martin. I'm the president of the Sinesta Villas Homeowners Association, and I'm here with um, uh, actually half of the community uh, felt strongly enough uh, tonight to appear in person. Um, we did have a lot of commentary uh, to share with the committees. Um, the public comment uh, has been down. Uh, most of the week, so I'm not sure, particularly at the board's letter uh, reached you. Um, if so, I hope that you'll take time to to read through our comments and, and to consider them. We do have um, an architect that we engaged um, to um, address some of our concerns. I, I want to be clear that the Sinesta Villa is, is not opposed to 15 units going in next door. But the particular design has many, many problems. And so we, on our initiative, hired an architect. And, and he is on the Zoom call. And I'm hoping that you'll allow him to step through his design. So I think the request here is they'd like their architect to have the opportunity to speak now out of sure. order. Okay. Yeah. Okay, is this so something we can share live? Or he's not able to share his screen? Or he's not able to share his screen, but I'm going to. Um, allow him to speak if he will is is that John Lum mm -hmm. okay yes. go ahead John you can speak and when you're ready I can display your information John you'll need to unmute yourself John, we're not hearing you. Can you um, put it on presentation view? I think that's my, my technical error, error. Please bear with us. These uh, joint hybrid meetings are yeah. always a bit of a technical challenge. John, you should be able to speak now. Just one moment. Yeah. There are advantages to being in person versus Zoom. But hey, we're happy to be here, right? Sometimes it has to do with webinar mode versus presentation mode. Right? Yeah, uh, KSVY is looking into the issue. OK, that's fine. Give us a couple minutes, we'll sort it out. Please stand by. A little technical issues. We'll, we'll we'll sort it out. It's not the first time we've been here with these hybrid meetings. They're always a bit of a challenge. Yeah, and this is the first one back in a while. Yeah. So.
I can put you on speakerphone here. We'll see if that will work. We hear something. Oh, so with that, do, can you hear me through yes. the speakerphone? We can hear you now, loud and clear. OK, great. So thank you. This is John Lum. I uh, thank you for letting me be able to present some ideas that we hope will uh, the developer will take into consideration to help mitigate some of the effects to Sinesta Villas. Um, by uh, using a slightly smaller plan of that is the unit five, eight, and nine, which one would call uh, plan three, and rotating the five houses that are being considered along Sinesta, uh, unit 10 through 15, we were able to um, achieve a much uh, more open uh, space that could be then planted with California natives. Um, we also see a great opportunity to, um, so what the, the goal here would be to uh, uh, reduce the wall of two-story houses and by alternating them in this very uh, slightly angled uh, way, the developer could still get the five houses along the a shared driveway there or the um, property line um, while also achieving a higher level of native landscaping, which we think would be a benefit for both developments. Uh, we also see the opportunity of the ditch, which one is referring to as a ditch, as a possibility to restore a native landscape. And there's an opportunity to uh, plant a, a, a much uh, higher level of California natives than what is proposed. The original um, proposal of the units 10 through 15 um, show basically private backyards that are not landscaped and not, not maintained by the HOA. So uh, we believe that this would be uh, uh, definitely increasing substantially the common open space by about 5,000 square feet. It would still give the units 10 through 15 um, driveways and also private backyards as what is required from normally single family detached homes. And uh, since this is the unit plan that was proposed for the three independent unit five, eight and nine, we believe that the developer would be fine with using the same plan, but just um, using a slightly smaller plan than the original uh, units that were proposed for 10 through 15. These represent 200 square feet less than what was proposed um, for those original houses there. Um, you can see we're uh, also suggesting that there could be a common pathway that would be used by, uh, of course, the Hummingbird residents and possibly through a, a joint agreement with Sinesta, there could be a shared agreement to um, allow access along the ditch, as we're calling it, or the restored creek, which we think would be um, augmented or would be actually a community benefit uh, versus just uh, uh, solely uh, dedicated to Hummingbird Court. Um, we're showing actually that we, we did have a, a meeting with the director, planning director, and he was suggesting that the uh, street A and B actually be reconnected because he felt that the fire marshal should be consulted uh, in regards to uh, access there. So that's, we're showing that in this kind of proposed alternative plan. Um, and uh, there would be definitely some type of agreement that would need to be um, met between the HO, common HOAs to about maintenance, et cetera. But I know the Senesa would be happy to uh, in, in be engaged into an HOA agreement that would allow for a much more open space um, than what was pr originally proposed. So I thank you for your um, consideration of this alternative plan. Don't forget to use your microphone. Forgot. Is there any other public comments or we'd like to come to the podium and present there? Is it possible to bring the, the image up? Okay, great. <laughs> so can you hear me? I, my 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 friends tell me that I speak uh, not very loudly, so I will I will try to Yeah, I think if you stay close to the mic, we'll okay, be okay. Okay, I'll stay very close to the mic. Thank you. So Let's wait a moment until I get the image up and we'll, okay. we'll go from there. So I, I, I basically want to advocate 
uh, on behalf of this plan, and particularly because Sinesta Villas is a, a one-story development, um, and our homes are approximately 50%, our largest homes are pro approximately 50% of the size of the what the developer is, is proposing. And the, um, the bottom part of this design is our, is our property line. And so what, what this provides for us is a, a few things. Number one, it creates the soft transition zone. And instead of us seeing a six foot fence, you know, with 31 foot homes right behind them blocking sunlight blocking the mountains i'm gonna cry <laughs> i've been there for 30 years and so you know i i i love my home and so it's a big impact to um have this staring at us but this transition zone um with its planting will soften that the angle of the homes will make the the bulk of these large homes away from us and give us a little more breathing room a little more sunlight um and as as john so uh so well articulated it'll provide a lot of open space that can be enjoy enjoyed by hummingbird it can be enjoyed by the public visitors to hummingbird um so uh, so we really advocate um for this plan okay thank you I have a question for you. Yeah. Knowing the area a little bit, can you tell me what that property line is adjacent to in Sinesta? Is it is it a driveway access to the property, or what is the yeah, actual it's property a, it's a, there? It's a driveway. We have a little planting strip, so we were murmuring because some of those trees on the tree report belong to us. But, <laughs> but yes, we have a planting tr strip and then a driveway. So the planting strip is off the driveway adjacent it, to the property? That long part of the, uh, the where the um, the trees would be put in, where the, the houses are at an angle, that is, that is, we have a driveway right there. Okay. So, you know, the entrance to our property will, will, would be marred by just a, a blank six foot. Um, it would really change the character. Understood. So, Are there any other so comments? We're, we're welcome to share. We we have shared um, uh, this this design has been reworked. We're happy to work with Trent, um, and we'd like to talk to him more. Okay. Is there anybody on the Zoom that has any comment? There may be more members of the public in oh, the sorry. room that want to speak. Please, please state your name. And just My name is Judy Friedman, and I live in Sinesta Villas. And our property, as you know, is directly to the south of this proposed development. I'm concerned about this proposed development for two reasons. One is the size and scope of each of the six units that will be directly on our northern border, and the other is about potential environmental issues. I understand and support the need of additional housing in Sonoma Valley. And my concerns are not based on the addition of more housing, but rather the size and potential impact this project can have in and around our neighborhood. The current design as proposed by DeNova will have six units of approximately 30 feet high directly on our northern border. These six units will create a very large wall as we look out to our north, obstructing the view, sunlight, and open space. In addition, the current configuration of these homes will appear as massive as those in the Mockingbird Lane development and will be right up against our property line. Mr. Lum's proposal does not diminish the number of units proposed by DeNova, but by angling them by 45 degrees, the appearance will give a much more open feel to their project. The amount of open space as currently shown in De DeNova's plan is very sparse. In addition, with the current DeNova plan, the most easterly home on this portion will include the area adjacent to the Winter Creek. This is potentially problematic if unsafe chem chemicals are used by the unknowing homeowner. This could cause the chemicals to seep into the watershed, feeding into Fire Creek. Additional environmental issues that may not have been evident to the developers relate to the wildlife that lives in and around the property. There are owls, deer, raccoon, possum, and fox, to name a few of the creatures who live in our neighborhood. 
The design Mr. Lum created opens up additional usable open space for humans and wildlife to enjoy. I urge the commissioners and committee members to consider these concerns as the project moves through the approval process. Thank you. Through the chair, if I may yes. um, state that, uh, David Storer would like to correct the record that he didn't say there must be a connection of the two streets, but that we could check with the fire department and we have reached out to the fire department, but we haven't gotten a response yet. Thank you for that clarity. Thanks, David. Can you please raise voting to state your name? Hi, my name is Jim Oaks. And my wife and I live in Sonesta Villas. It's really I'm sorry, can you hear me better now? Hello? Hello? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll turn it up. Okay. Is it okay? You just test, 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 and we get a level. Test, here. test, test. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. If you stand on the southeast corner of the intersection of West MacArthur and Fifth Street West and face north across West MacArthur, you will see a patch of green space running alongside the Storm Canal, a space owned and maintained by the city of Sonoma and I therefore presume not slated for development. If you turn to your left and look across Fifth Street West, you will see the Moon Valley community of mobile homes. Actually, you won't see any of the homes because they, they, are, they are barely visible beyond the ridge of hedges. To the east of the lot De Nova proposes to develop are a number of mostly single-story homes beyond which lies the Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and composed again of modest, well-tended single-family homes single-story homes. And if you turn to the south, you will see Sonesta Villas, where my wife and I live. Adjacent to the southern border of the proposed hummingbird development, Sonesta comprises 21 single-family, single-story condominiums that are, for Sonoma, relatively modestly priced. By contrast, what De Nova proposes to build on that corner is a collection of needlessly, I, I would say provocatively massive homes that will tower over their neighbors and fundamentally alter the character of the surrounding community. This, might, this is an example of what you might call architectural gigantism. I, f I fully understand that we are in the midst of a nationwide housing crisis, a crisis that is particularly acute in California, in which I firmly believe the city of Sonoma has both a legal and a moral obligation to address. But there is no housing crisis among the wealthy, and the proposed construction of 12 very, out of 15 very large and very expensive homes does nothing to address the problem. McMansions are not the solution. My neighbors and I are not asking for the number of units to be reduced, only that they re be reduced in scale, that they evince more respect for the surrounding community, and that they do more to address the very real shortage of modestly priced homes in Sonoma. More specifically, we ask that De Nova do more to minimize the abruptness of the proposed transition between Hummingbird and Sonesta Villas. As it stands, De Nova is proposing to construct a massive wall of big, tall houses along our property line. Can this not be moderated? We are concerned by the lack of open space in the proposed development. We are concerned by the lack of visitor parking. We are concerned that some of our neighbors will lose the access they've long enjoyed along the easement. But rather than simply grumble and gripe, we have tried to be constructive by proposing an alternative plan that accentuates the natural features of the development while mitigating some of its mo more overwhelming aspects. And we have gone out of our way to communicate our concerns to De Nova, though it must be said with very little reciprocity on the developer's part. We know that state laws limit lo what local planning authorities can do, but we urge you to do all that is within your power to nudge De Nova to be better neighbors, to be good neighbors, by adopting a more accommodating stance than has been the case thus far. Thank you. Are there other people? Please come to the podium and state your name. My name is Janice Thorsten. Can you hear me okay? We can. Good. Because I don't want you to miss a word. All right? <laughs> One of the definitions used by Webster Dictionary to define cottages is a small house for vacation use. De Nova uses the definition of 31 feet high and 2,400 square feet. 
the homes at Sinesta Villas are half that size. Transportation has already been impacted by DeNova housing called Mockingbird Lane and will continue with Hummingbird Cottages. The residents at Sonoma Villas will be seriously impacted by entering and leaving their property. I want you to think about what I'm going to say now. DeNova came, DeNova builds, then DeNova leaves. However, this is the important thing. The current residents at Sonoma Villas, who were here long before DeNova, will have to live and have their lives impacted by the decisions of DeNova. Kindly listen to our requests and consider the consequences you may be leaving us. Thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you. Are there other comments in the room? Good evening. My name is Marcia May Cumber. I am a resident for 10 years at Sinesta Villas. And I just want to bring a small little design detail to your attention for your considerations as you go through the process of thinking through this. And as you recall, everything comes down to a little point in the corner which is about 400, 300, 400 feet from 5th Street West. Currently, the owners of the units that are in the very back have gateway access through that, that they can come down to egress the property, go to the trash area, et cetera, et cetera. The plan presented by John Lum provides for access through there, the enhancement of the riparian corridor there along the creek, so that in the event of an emergency, people at the very back of the property could egress easily using that as an access. I hope you will consider that and not cut off their access uh, to one way of getting off the property in the event of an emergency. The rest of my comments were put in a letter, which I'm sure you can read at your leisure. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Frederick Lucas Conwell. I am a neighbor um, living in San Estavillas. We moved here two years ago. We enjoyed the place. I want to thank you for the magnificent report you have done. It's filled with history of the neighborhood. I learned a lot, so thank you very much. I learned about the history of the place. I learned it used to be flat, uh, plainly flat, which is very really interesting. Still some orchid are living there. Um, and I'm really concerned, and uh, goes back to some arguments before, that what you are going to build here, if you build it, uh, is too high in two stories. Who have thought about that? Uh, so I want, I'm interested to understand why it has never been changed, this two story thing. Why not just one story? We understand the final con financial consequences of two stories versus one versus nothing. Has Sonista, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sonoma considered buying the land for building a garden instead of these houses? I mean, we are, we are extremely concerned. If you go there right now, you see it's quite a, you know, filled with one-story houses. There are a few two-story houses here and there behind some trees. There's a hospital not far from what they have built recently. Um, when you look at what's what built two-story, it is just uh, uh, not nice looking. This is what you want to build near our houses. This is uh, this is not acceptable. Uh, it's going to hide, you know, have a view of the mountains. Um, all the others around there, we see that, uh, you know, not building skyscrapers, but close to that. Consider there are just uh, one-story houses around it. And so if you go and see what's, what's going on over there uh, and come back uh, when this project is built, if it's built, uh, people are going to complain. Uh, so not just us next to uh, you know, the side, but many others who are surrounded uh, the place and who are in one-story houses. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really surprised and concerned that that has never been challenged. It's not just you know, building 15 houses or 17 houses. This is building high houses. You have three project design, three project design, they are all look alike. There is nothing like you know, small or same as what we have around that place. Uh, so that's uh, my remark here. Thank you. 
Thank you. So I'm the other half of the side up here. Fine. Susan Lucas Conwell, also at Senesta Villas. I would just like to reinforce one point in addition to everything that the other people have mentioned, which is a very real concern around parking in the area and then the fact that it, when you visit there, there are bike lanes on both sides of the property. And <clears throat> having been there for two years, as, have you, as you've just heard, when we go by the other project that they have done, which is like a blockhouse of very large houses on Mockingbird Lane. It's very easy to write on paper. Well, people will just put their cars and their bikes in the garage. That's not true. I walked. I walk by the. I walk the dog by there every day. On Sunday, the entire other side of the street was full. Yes, there's a parking lot. Nobody parks there. They have garages. They fill them with their old stuff. There were a few legal parking spots, kind of filled. People throw their cars where they want to throw them. This is a real issue. So just saying, well, they're going to put their bikes in there. They're, they're not going to do that. That isn't realistic. It just is not realistic. And then when you look where it's situated, what's going to happen to Cisnesta Villas is that they're going to come park in our parking. And we have very little parking. There's no reason why we should have to put up a gate or put up a barrier because there's so many houses over there. So I rejoin the questions about the environment, about the creek, about the height of the houses. I won't repeat that. I think the city has to be very serious about looking at the parking, looking at the access around the lot, um, because it will have a significant impact, as Mockingbird Lane already has on the neighborhood. So thank you for listening. Thank you. My name is Mandy Massarelli, and I'm also in the Senesta Villas. Our land that can be developed in Sonoma is a precious and limited resource. Denova is planning to squeeze in 15 homes on just 1.5 acres. Almost no consideration is being made for Sonoma's need for moderately priced homes or the aesthetics of open space around homes. The Mockingbird development that they just completed has almost no landscaping and no common area for the residents to enjoy or the children to play. The homes are extremely large and expensive. Smaller homes can be built and developers can still make a profit. Sonesta Villas condos where I live next door were built profitably with 800 and 1200 square feet units with open space. I believe it is the job of the Planning Commission and the City Council to care about the needs of our community and not to maximize every dollar of profit for DeNova. A better developer is Pesquan, who is profitably building real 900 square foot cottages on Walnut Avenue. Consideration is being given for the type of housing needed in Sonoma, which is small, and there are plans for thick vegetation around the property. The Pasquins state that they are not invested, uh, invested in this project simply for profit, but to develop housing that would benefit a family. Thank you. Hello. Uh, can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Pete Posert. I uh, spent about half my time in Sinesta Villa. But I lived for many, many years here in the city of Sonoma. I served on the Civil Service and Environment Commission for about three years and often sat where you are. It's fun to be back in the room. Uh, I think online, hello, Kimberly. It's been, been a number of years. Uh, I'm concerned about this project for, for a, I hope, a serious and alternate reason than, than some of the others given, having to do with the environment and families. I, uh, I've just been wondering where, where the kids are going to play. Uh, you know, I look at the design in Mockingbird Lane and know that I live just around the court over around the corner on Arroyo Court when I lived here in town. But there's this big, large open space for children to play. And I remember playing catch with my son out there for years in soccer out in the common area, and it's just sadly lacking. I, I almost feel from both proposals, really. And 
thinking about that, I also know that in my garden right now, the peach trees are blooming. The uh, peas are coming up, the strings. Um, the daffodils are trumpeting their yellows. A and there's no community garden here other than this pre-planned uh, area. If it's like Mockingbird Lane, there's just a bunch of rocks out by the street and some trees, it seems like. And I really, really want to thank uh, the Denova uh, partner here for coming and hearing these concerns. And I appreciate your time and I believe honest concerns and uh, open-mindedness. Um, because I feel in some ways these homes are lacking something. And I know that the built spaces are, are, are indicative of you know, the, and inform the lives of the inhabitants. And it's our values that get reflected in the built spaces. And, and I just want to make sure that we encourage people to stay out of a life of screen. And I feel the way these homes are designed and built in both instances almost condemn the inhabitants to the world of screen and not to the natural world around them. And I just want to make sure I, they could lose one house and put in a little more park, and I think still make a profit, and put in a garden, and, and open up the world to the natural world around them. Thank you. Thank you. Is that everybody in the room from the public? We're going to open up now. Is there anybody online or on Zoom? Yes, Chair Cormany. Uh, Diane Luminaire would like to speak. Go ahead, Diane. Yes, hello. Thank you for having this meeting. Um, I've also submitted comments uh, that I hope you will put into the record. I emailed them earlier today. Um, I appreciate so much the comments of local neighbors. I've lived here for 10 years. I'm across the street at um, Pueblo Serena, and I have walked this neighborhood for every day every day and i've loved that little uh parcel on the corner for the walnut trees and things there but the most important thing uh, one of the most important things are that stand of eucalyptus trees that no one has mentioned they are the gateway to sonoma on fifth street they are some of the most oldest and most beautiful trees in this uh, in this um community and it would be like the equivalent of you taking down the eucalyptus tree on the plaza to us in this neighborhood um they house their raptors in the neighborhood who eat rodents they they house no end of wildlife they provide oxygen they take in co2 they are magnificent and this current developer who has built Denova Homes, has bought so many properties in this town and plans to do this kind of two-story housing throughout Sonoma. And it has to stop. It absolutely has to stop. We need single-family homes in this area, not two-story massive homes with eight feet apart from each other or 10 feet apart from each other. I feel so sad for Sinesta Villas. I also feel sad for every, every other neighbor in this community who walk bike, their dogs, their children who play, that this developer is not sensitive to the nature of our community. These homes are fine in San Jose. That's great if they want to be in an urban development. But you, Denova Homes, are in a rural community, and single-family homes are just fine. If you look around you, please, Planning Commission and Tree Commission, look around, walk the neighborhood. This is a this exclusively single family homes here. There's not a single two story home here other than DeNova who put them in on MacArthur. It is a massive development that is tragic because it has blocked the view of our famous Sonoma hills and mountains to every every other neighbor. I live in a community that has more garden space. <laughs> How, however humble, and these homes are not that humble, they're 1,500 square foot single story homes. DeNova can build 1,500 or even 1,000 square foot single family homes with gardens and be welcome to this neighborhood. So we're not going to stop here. We're, not, we're asking you, this committee, to not approve 
your staff's recommendations to cut down those beautiful eucalyptus trees. Why don't you, there's a driveway where you're going to cut one of those trees down. Why don't you call this eucalyptus lane? Because it'll be in memory of the trees that you cut down. Please stop. Go somewhere else. Or else build homes that we want here. Not homes that you want here. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy, is there further online? There are no other uh, comments on the Zoom, Chair Cormany. So uh, is there in chat, is that relative to a comment or not? No? No. Okay. No. Okay. At this point, I'm going to close the meeting to public and bring it back to the commission, actually commissions at this point. So I'm going to start with design review. Um, Commissioner Marr, I'd like to hear your opinion. Um, can I make a suggestion? Sure. That you might go through the different various aspects of the project first, go through the de design review, then perhaps you, um, you could look at the landscaping and look at the and do yeah, the I, I think it might be prudent to, to mention too what we're here for today because this is, we are not the planning commission. We don't we, we kind of advise the planning commission. We're design review, so we're we're to here today. Look at demolition, design review, landscape. And, and hear from people's perspective about the general, but we are not the planning commission. I think it's really important to make that distinction. So that would be we would, we can advise or bring privy to that, but we we do not we don't we don't have that authority. We are the design review. We are not the planning commission. So um, let's talk first about some of the things that have been proposed here from uh, amongst ourselves. Do we want to reach out to these commissioners on? aspects thereof as far as yes they'll need to um, be consulted so you might want to um, uh, talk about the demol demolition first or um, and, and move that's how it was outlined in the staff report right. but you don't have to do that so we can talk about demolition it's kind of interesting to me though that because if you don't have a plan to move forward you don't really need to do demolition um, so let's talk about demolition and design review Commissioner Marr what is what's your opinion um, I'm satisfied with the historical uh, evaluation that deemed the property uh, to be not a significant um, resource and I think it is a blight um, in the middle of that beautiful green space it's it it should come down and um, so I'm in favor of those plans Mr. Johnson uh, I'd like to agree with Commissioner Marr I um, um, I agree with the demolition aspect of, of this proposal thus far. Um, the uh, I, I read through the HRE and I didn't see anything there that would uh, cause a red flag. And um, in knowing that, that we deal with that issue in the historic overlay a lot, we, we take that very serious. So uh, I feel that the work has been done on that component of this proposal and I am okay with it. I, I too have put a considerable amount of time into the historic reports. I enjoy reading them. It's fascinating to see the history. Um, and I think that moving ahead, as soon as that property became available for sale, it was like somebody's going to bulldoze that house and put something else there. It was pretty obvious that would be a, a better use of the space. And for clarity, I believe the existing home is two story, is it not? Okay, so there is some history of a two story residence in the area, just for clarity. Right, but it, 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 there's been a lot of comments that there's no two-story house in the area. It is, it is a two-story house, just for clarity. Um, as far as design review, do we want to talk about Now, some? you'll also want to go out to the tree committee on comments on the demolition. Okay. So, um, uh, Commissioner Blattner and Reserve, you should be able to unmute and speak if you have any comments to say. Does Sorry, Commissioner Blattner, start again. Can't, no, hold on, we have an audio issue. Can you hold your... Stand by, we're having a little technical problem with the sound. Can you try to speak again? Now we're 
we're still having a, a sound issue. Um, Commissioner Blattner, why don't we try um, having you call my cell phone, or I'll call you. Just one moment. Bear with us. None of this was ever easy with the, the split meetings. Kimberly or Commissioner Blattner, I'm calling you. Oopsie. Yes. Can you speak and see if we can hear you? <laughs> yes, I can speak. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're having some feedback issues. Um, Kimberly, can, uh, Commissioner Blattner, can you please mute your computer while you speak on the yes. phone? Yes. Can you hear me now? Hold the phone closer to you. Go ahead and speak. Turn the volume down, maybe. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, just a, just a moment. Please be patient. We'll hopefully work our way through this. We're going to try an experiment. And we're going to ask John Meserve to speak. How about this? Can you hear me, Wendy? We sure can. Okay. All right. So that's one problem solved. So now, Kimberly, you go ahead and speak. And you're unmute. unmuted. Okay. So we can't hear you, Kimberly. So I'm wondering if you could... Can you check your Zoom settings to make sure you're connected to the mic? Or 
or it could even be your computer setting. Kimberly, can you send me an email of what you want to say? Meanwhile, while she's doing that, let's see if uh, Commissioner Meserve would like to say anything. Hi, and this is regarding demolition, Wendy? Yes. Um, I, I have no problem with demolition of the home. It's not going to affect any valuable trees or trees that um, are, are at least at this point slated for preservation. So I, ha I have no issues there. Waiting to see if uh, Kimberly's going or Commissioner Blattner is sending me an email with her comments. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, perhaps you'd like to move on to uh, design review. Sure. So. I think while we're waiting, trying to figure out some of that, we can talk a little bit. For clarity, I have a question for staff. Is the removal of tree part of uh, demolition? Is that a consideration, or is that part of the tree decision? That's a different. Okay. That's part of the tree decision. Okay. okay. So what and, we've had so far is we've had comments about the demolition. It seems like there seems to be pretty good consensus that demolition of the property is not a historic structure. And from what I'm hearing, pretty much a consensus amongst us. Would, uh, do we need to make a motion for each one of these, or we can do it all together? Do it all together. Okay. So, in general, we don't feel, from the historic report and the evaluation and feedback from the various commissioners, that the demolition of the property is not really a concern. The existing structure, historical value isn't there. You're getting too low. You're, you need to protect your Okay. Okay. The next thing we'd like to consider is the uh, design review aspect of this, as far as what the applicant has submitted as far as design aesthetics and how it fits into our community. Um, I'd like to go open to the commission for feedback on your opinions on the design aspects of this project. I'll start with Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chair Cormany. Uh I, I um, have looked at all the different designs and from what I understand uh, through the uh, the proposals, um, the developer has uh, kept everything within the guidelines that we are overseeing. Uh, I think that the, it's a nice mix of, of houses, the, the, the appearances of them um, uh, make it a little more interesting that they're not all the same. Uh, and as uh, Commissioner um, Chair Cormany mentioned, uh, you know, the, the house that we are demolishing is a two-story house. so. Um, uh, it isn't an area that just has single single homes, and I, I do get the argument about it being a, a lower two-story house. But as far as uh, what I've seen in the packet, the uh, elevations and the the design aspects of it, uh, I'm comfortable with. Commissioner Mar. Okay, this will be fun because I really enjoyed the green space there and it's one of the things I remarked when I moved to Sonoma about 10 years ago was how much green space there is in this town and it just made it such a nice place to live and it gave that kind of impression of being in the countryside even when we're in the city center. So I'm sad to see that go. I I understand uh, why we're letting it go, and I'm I'm on board with that and um, creating more housing opportunities. Um, we have this project before us. They, we have lots of plans for um, developing uh, this parcel pretty rapidly and making that happen in a reasonable amount of time, which many builders are not able to do at this time. Um, I like the overall aesthetic of the Mockingbird homes. Uh, they are a little large for the area. We're used to seeing the small 50s and style homes and the smaller condos and spaces. Um, so it is a change for that, that area. Uh, 
I think that they are on a little bit of a level up aesthetically from a common suburban development. I think there's been some extra thought into the designs and making them look good um, with the rest of the town's aesthetic. I think that personally for me it's too much to have the three different styles and I think I'd like to see only two rather than three. I think it's going to be a little cluttered and confusing looking. For myself I prefer the farmhouse and the craftsman styles over the mission. Uh, I quite like how the Oliva apartments turned out. Those, it's a very pretty mission style design. I from a horse historical perspective want to see all that mission stuff closer to the plaza and go nuts with the mission stuff there, Spain Street as well, and then keep the the surrounding areas in a more farm-like style. And I think that will help to kind of preserve the countryside feeling, even if we're giving up some of our green spaces. Um, I really like the neighbors' effort, how that they ro really rose up to this challenge to um, try to preserve their own um, enjoyment of life and how much care and concern they have for the other neighbors in our city as a whole. And it's sad for me to see them sacrifice that area that they just, this is like their yard almost. It's like, this is their space, even though I, I just drive by it, but this is really kind of part of their, their, um, their enjoyment um, living where they live. And so I, I have a lot of sympathy um, for this, and I would, I would request that the developers really take to heart these comments and see if there's any way you can um, maybe work with the other architect and take some of his considerations. Um, I don't know if they work for you and what you're doing, but um, at least take the comments of the neighbors to heart and see if there are different tweaks that you can do to help to preserve their enjoyment um, and not to kind of block them in. So maybe reducing the height a little bit would be good, um, including more green space within the little uh, parcel. And I, I think that if you give a little, you can get a lot more in return. And I think the idea with the easement going through the back to encourage kind of um, the use of the com all of the neighbors in that little space that would be something wonderful to give if it's possible um, and that's all I'm going to say right now thank you thank you one of the things I'd like to say is I I think I'm a believer in medium density infill I mean I think Sonoma is a very special place but I think we have to make sure we provide some infill that allows people to actually live and work here that doesn't become exclusive because I've seen that happen in other communities where we have constraints and then the only people who can live there are wealthy and I think having some medium density infill is really important and we've seen a number of that go through in the past couple of years I'm thinking about the project across from Train Town, your project on Spain Street for example and I see a common thread in all of that and that is that when these are proposed uh, neighbors are reluctant to see change I mean we can all have trouble with that sometimes and they forecast doom and gloom it's gonna be trouble with you know traffic on Broadway we're not gonna be parking on Spain the, uh, these projects seem to go in and then a couple years later they don't necessarily, in my opinion, have the impact of the negative impacts that people had anticipated. So I think there has to be some appreciation that it may be different, but that doesn't make it wrong. It may look different than where you live, but it doesn't make it wrong. Another consideration I like to make is size. The average house in, in the United States today being built today is 2,500 square feet. So these projects coming in at 1,400 is, is actually from a developer standpoint pretty small. Um, another trend in development that I don't necessarily agree with but I see frequently is the lack of outdoor space and they tend to stack properties on top of each other and you know setbacks being five feet to fences and things like this are pretty common in new development. That in some regards is driven by consumer demand for having more interior floor space and not as much outdoor space. 
So those are some of the things I'm not a developer, but I see that developers have to struggle with. And there's this balance between preserving outdoor space. I mean, these do have yards. They do have some outdoor common space. Um, I can appreciate not wanting to have towering two-story houses right adjacent from your property. I can respect that. Perhaps if they're nine foot ceilings, you could go to an eight foot ceiling and reduce overall heights or something like that to make some concessions. But these homes all have yards in the back that soften a little that transition. I think that there is some adverse reaction because that's going to change a situation that's been there for many years and it's going to look different. Um, I, I think we have to embrace medium density. I think the way they presented this has a lot of attention to detail and is sympathetic to our architecture and our styles. I think I would agree that, I don't know, when I first saw there was a proposal for three different architectural styles in one development, I thought it seems like, at first my, was I suggesting there was one of these three options and then I realized they're trying to incorporate all three. It seems like a lot to ask in one, one space. But overall, from what I've seen in the plans, there's been some attention to preserving outdoor space and making it functional while providing the things that homeowners are currently interested in and that's what they're responding to. Um, but yet I'm sympathetic to the neighbors and in your situation after living there for a number of years and wanting to have things remain the same. So I, uh, I have to say that that's not up for us to decide. We're looking at it from a design perspective as far as planning and what they decide whether that's allowed to build is the next step in this process. But overall I think what's been presented has a lot of appreciation of the his history of the town, some respect for what we're trying to do, and it conforms to our guidelines, and I don't have any problems with it on that regard, because if we set guidelines and somebody comes and builds to those guidelines, how can we then later say, well, you need to change the guidelines, or you need to, you know, they're trying to run a business do the best they can. So I think they've done a pretty good job of trying to some, find some balance there. It seems to me that they're very willing to hear comments and feedback. I don't think they're a stone wall. Perhaps the perception is different, but I think anybody who wants to be in this town and be around and be a part of it, and they've obviously want to do multiple properties here, so I think they'd be willing to listen. So with that's pretty much my, my opinion on the situation. Sure. So we should go out to the tree committee and see okay. if they have any comments on the design review. And we'll start with uh, Commissioner Meserve and um, Commissioner Blattner can provide any comments she has in the chat. Wendy, you're looking for my input on design review? Correct. So in, in relation to trees, um, we're removing a lot of trees, and most of them are in poor condition. Um, but just uh, as uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Just We're just commenting on the design review aspect of the project. So if you don't have any comments about the design review, you can state that. Otherwise, we'll talk about the trees uh, next. OK, I got it. I don't have any comments. Thanks for that clarification. Hi, hey, Wendy. This is David. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, I was just wondering if the if we could have the Design Review Commission discuss the design of the project relative to the units being angled, as has been presented by Mr. Lum. If they have an opinion, uh, if it's if they prefer that design uh, of the sh of the shape or the orientation of the buildings versus what has been proposed by the applicant. I think that would be helpful to the Planning Commission. Um, clearly, they can they can recommend approval of a particular design or a design with a suggestion to the Commission that they consider an alternate design, if that would help. And, and for clarity, that was David Sorge, our Planning Commissioner, correct? A Planning Director, yes. Planning Director, just for those of you who may not be aware. Um, I'll put it out to the Commission. Do you have input on the two submissions? submissions tonight. I'll go with Commissioner Marr. Um, in order for me to really know what kind of difference it would make, I'd almost need to see a model of it to see how the light is affecting on this angle versus this angle. I don't know if it could be done with commu computer generation these days pretty quickly. Otherwise, if anybody has some time, you could <laughs> start playing with it and see, you know, exactly how significant the sunlight the more the minutes of sunlight or um, kind of the aesthetics as you're looking at it from different angles. Um, I need to see it in a 3D perspective almost in order to make a good judgment of that. So, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I'd have to agree. I, I would really need to see that. Um, 
even if it was of uh, just the two dimensional on paper, just to kind of get a look at the overall layout and how that how that looks. Um, we don't have that, so um, I think the the ideas I guess could be carried on further with the developer and the planning commission and the concerned uh, the concerned neighbors about that, and maybe they can put something together that they can present at that meeting and see if uh, there's anything to that. Um, but without having seen it, I, I'm I'm not really comfortable to say one over the other. So, or so the, the question is not seeing an elevation view, it's hard to determine from just a plan view, yeah, is that I the consensus? I think the what I was hearing was that they wanted to turn because of it helping to um, lessen the impact of the buildings, the houses, and their views of the mountains and the sunlight, um, and I'm not really sure, you know, what that would do or not do, because I, I, I can't see it. Yeah, my perspective is I don't see a problem with creating them on a diagonal. It doesn't seem like that big of a, it seems like a reasonable compromise to me. It'll help break up some of that, that, I mean, I can understand the wall of fences and being a straight line. If it breaks up that and you can soften it with some plantings, it seems like a reasonable compromise in my opinion. And that's my perspective. Great, so would you like to move on to um, the Arborist Report? I would, thank you very much. Great, so uh, perhaps this is an opportunity for uh, the Tree Committee to, to chime in. And John Meserve is uh, not only on the Tree Committee uh, as the city appointed arborist, he's the arborist who wrote the Arborist Report, uh, so he can provide some clarification and background, but he's not able to officially vote on the item, um, but tonight there is no actual vote. You're just making a recommendation to the Planning Commission, so I, I don't see any Brown Act violations. Um, and so I'll turn it over to John and Kimberly can chime in in the chat. Wendy, should I just take questions from anybody? Everybody's seen the report. I assume it's in their packets. Do you want me to review the report? Do you want me to take questions? I'm not sure what the protocol here is. I, I can address that. I think if you can, I mean, one of the concerns we've heard tonight is r over the existing eucalyptus trees and some of the demolition of the existing trees. Can you comment on the health and quality of those trees? And then, you know, I have some personal opinions about eucalyptus trees. What's your opinion of that? How they fit? What are they? age, just to kind of a little bit of history of what your understanding of that property is? Okay, sure, I'll address the eucalyptus first. Um, they are extremely large. Um, uh, they're probably midway through their lives. They will get larger. Um, in my opinion, it's the wrong tree in that place. Um, I think it's probably been a fine tree up to now. But to start to um, intrude towards them with infrastructure sidewalks, um, and homes, um, it's, it's, a, it's a mismatch. So um, they do tend to shed large limbs. They're extremely messy. In another situation, they're the best tree there is. But in this situation, I don't believe they really belong. And to do what the developers suggesting, they need to, they need to be taken down. You know, can you make any comments about fire and eucalyptus? I have some history of that. Sure, there's, you know, fire, eucalyptus and fire have a long, long relationship. They're extremely fire prone um, for a number of reasons. They're high in oils, flammable oils. They tend to um, generate a lot of debris on the ground underneath, which is very flammable. And their bark um, is uh, exfoliates, it peels off, and that bark tends to catch fire and, um, and move with the wind. So they have a pretty bad reputation for, for sending fire downwind um, quite readily. Um, so they are, they're very, very fire prone species, as, as fire prone as any tree, I would say, or more than any tree. Thank you. Yeah, I can... Um she doesn't she has not submitted any text comments on the tree but perhaps I'm not text uh, chat in the zoom I don't see any chat in the zoom from uh, oh. oh 
there we go. Um, so would um, the tree committee like to discuss what type of tree replacement ratio they'd like to recommend to the planning commission? Uh, I, I would stay with our um, standard recommendation. We, we try to um, maintain a situation in Sonoma of no net loss of trees. So um, our standard has been at least one 15 gallon tree for each tree that's been that's being removed. And I think that's appropriate here. I think there's room for that. Um, and with the proper selection, I think it would benefit the benefit the site. And Kim, Kimberly is giving the affirmative, or sorry, Commissioner Blattner is giving the affirmative with a two thumbs up. Thank you so much. So then if the um, design review, the Historic Preservation Commission would like to make any comments on the tree replacement ratio. Commissioner Marr, do you have an opinion? I would defer to the tree committee on this and I think the more trees, the merrier. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I, I agree. More trees, uh, the merrier. Um, I'm also actually just, I, I should ask, with the tree replacement plan that you have, uh, you know, uh, eventually how large will those trees get? I mean, they're, they're going to grow into fairly large trees, right? Well, to ask that question, you need to have uh, the chair yeah, open yeah. up the okay. public. Well, then I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that question. Um, I, I'm confident with the Arborist report and the direction that he's moving, so. Yeah, and my comment is what I've seen historically with landscape plans is at least one for one. We seem to be really generous and aware, and we like our green space. So I have some comfort in the fact that there will be replacement trees, and they may not be at the same scale, but I'm not fully convinced that the scale is there is appropriate anyway. So that would be my comments regarding trees. Great. So the applicant will res will um, in turn revise his conceptual landscape plan to incorporate additional trees based on the one-to-one -one ratio for the number of trees that are going to be removed. And then the planning commission will um, be reviewing the formal landscape and irrigation plans, but at this time if the, this commission or the tree committee have any comments on the conceptual landscape plan, you can provide them now. No. I, I think we have none. I, w I would like to ask the tree commission about some of the comments regarding the riparian or the the creek or the ditch however you want to consider that there seems to be pretty consorted efforts and i know there's setbacks for that do you see any problems in this design from what you saw for trees and setbacks i haven't seen the planting plan for that area um and i, I think it's important to consider that that really isn't a riparian zone and it's going to have trouble supporting riparian species Irrigated landscape natives would be fine, including trees, um, but it really isn't a creek and shouldn't be treated as a creek in terms of planting. So Thank I you. haven't seen the plan to know how I that fits. Are there Chair Cormany, uh, this is David again, uh, David Storm, planning director. <laughs> um, just a quick question. Does the commission have a, um, an opinion or a rec recommendation to the planning commission irrespective of the, let's call it the John Lum angled plan, does it have a, des a determination as to whether the open space or activity area is uh, bisected by the streets that, or do they prefer the design of the streets passing through the connecting streets one way or the other? Um, notwithstanding the fact that we, we do need to contact the fire department. Right. Wendy, would it be possible to see those visuals again so we can have the comparative? Sure thing. Thank you. You have it right up here. No, nope, that's not it. Let's see. It should be coming up. Um, and 
uh, what specific, what were you asking to see? Sorry. The, the throughways regarding whether the road oh. goes through or not and the two different versions right. of that. Excuse me, could the p members of the public please keep their comments to themselves at the moment? Thank you. We, what was that? We might need my laptop for that one. I think it was only in my presentation. Oh. Old in the new, if you'd like. We have to open it to the public. Um, no, it? no, I have it. Thank you, Trent. You know, while we're waiting, I will present a little concept. I don't know what the name of the property is, but I've seen other developments in Sonoma where you have a street that comes in and there's a common area in between with a green space that typically have a mailbox or something like that. So it creates a situation where you don't have a thoroughfare, mm -hmm. but you do have kind of a common area. And it's uh, I kind of like that structure because maybe it brings people together when they're going through their mail. It keeps the thoroughfare of the traffic and that. Personally, I like the idea of it being split and having more green space. I, some of that is a concern to the fire department too. So. And which um, about slide? Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Okay, so Wendy, can you kind of walk us through which is the previous and which have been yes. the most recent for history, so this, please? So this was uh, the previous proposal that went before the Planning Commission as a study session. And based on the feedback the Planning Commission provided, the applicant came back with this plan. It's essentially moving this unit over to the east and moving the shared common area the middle of the site. So, and just for clarity, this one does not have a thoroughfare, the other one did, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, I'd like to put it to the Commission for comments on that specific detail. Commissioner Marr? M Mr. Chair, if I can, uh, sure. David again, and then also um, a, a recommendation or thoughts about the, the John Lum plan relative not so much to the orientation of the buildings but whether or not there should be that thoroughfare or the use of the property uh, to have that uh, activity area in the very southeast corner of the property. That would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, lucky Unit 11, or is that Unit 15? The one in the corner, <laughs> Unit 15. Um, I think I think I do prefer this Unit 15 in their nice backyard with the meeting space in the middle. Um, it just does not seem practical to have the common area and tucked in that corner where um, it just doesn't seem practical at all. Um, I mean, it's it's not much. <laughs> so I, I don't even, as far as the the access and the cars and everything that like that, I don't. Um, I, it's good to have the entrance on MacArthur and Fifth Street West and kind of have two sections. It breaks it up into the two sections where it maybe seems a little bit more exclusive for those units to have their own little six section divided by the little um, green space. Um, can you give me an estimate of how big is that turf area? Oh, do I have to do that? I have to open it up. We'd, oh we'd need to um, okay. ask the applicant. Well, it's, uh, I don't know if it's that significant in order to talk about it that much longer. Yeah, so I can tell you that the um, common open space proposed in this plan is larger than the common open space proposed in the previous plan. Okay. Well, I think logistically and practically for the residents themselves, having it in the middle would be better suited to the residents. Mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson, I, I prefer the the, uh, the open green space kind of in the middle, so it's uh, a little bit more accessible for well, it's accessible for everybody. Uh, I think the two 
units up at the north end of this property would uh, you know have a long way to go to enjoy what um, what green space there would be the only thing that I I would you know defer to is uh, again since we have not heard from the fire department um, you know I could see if there were an emergency there um, it might be more advantageous to have the uh, the access way through there but um, but that's not something I could comment on that would be something for them but I, I, I for the community itself I, I agree with Commissioner Ma I think that the uh, having it kind of centralized there in that space and it's from what we understand a uh, larger uh, area than than the uh, the other proposal um, it's it's this looks more beneficial to the community as a whole yeah. and my comment on the kind of preceded this a little bit by saying I prefer this because I do believe in having the two traffic areas separated by a green space creates a, a natural divide it will force some people to use Fifth Street and some people to use MacArthur's you don't have a thoroughfare that's advantageous I think the green space is preferred it's almost like if you took this design here and you took the bottom row houses and canted them 45 degrees to soften that edge it would be a pretty suitable compromise for a lot of the concerns we've heard this evening so that might be something to look at but overall as far as a thoroughfare that's um, my opinion on that would be tough to do there's not a whole lot of excess room in here mm -hmm. and somebody's gonna have to give up something to do that so I think that would be nice but I don't see it being practical Commissioner Marr uh, yes I just thought of this as you mentioned um, it gets really backed up on that corner frequently in the afternoons and I can see people wanting to zoom right through and use that as a way to cut that corner so probably not a good idea okay Wendy can you tell me where we stand now well I think we have enough information to forward a recommendation on the Planning Commission uh, maybe one of the commissioners would like to uh, make a motion it was my understanding that you supported the demolition um, and the design review as proposed uh, th you have a, a recommenda recommendation for a, a, a tree replacement of a one-to-one -one for every tree that's removed and um, you support the current um, configuration site pan plan that's proposed this evening you and mr. chair would would the Commission consider forwarding a not so much a concern but a uh, an opportunity for the Planning Commission to consider the the view shed or the light, I think it was, and the massing of the two unit structures and their impact on the Sonesta Village property. I think uh, Commissioner Johnson mentioned something to that effect. I'm probably not saying it right, but that's what I thought I heard, or something like that. Thank you. I'm sorry, what was the... Yo, can you repeat your clarification, please? Uh, yeah, I, bl I believe it was uh, Commissioner Johnson that talked about uh, uh, or Commissioner Omar saying that it was hard for them to visualize the angled, um, the impact of the angled units on Sonesta Villas without seeing it either in 3D or some kind, and it was difficult. Maybe they would the commission want to forward uh, not so much a recommendation, but information that might be of value to the commission as it, as it considers uh, hearing from the Sonesta Villa folks about the angled nature of those units, uh, that there would be a information that should be provided by the applicant or excuse me by Sinesta Villages that shows that because um, that's what I heard in the discussion tonight so thank I, you I think I might be able to clarify that so if what we saw from Sinesta Villa was all planned view if there was some ele elevation provided to show how that being angled at 45 degrees might be helpful for supporting that argument because it's tough to visualize when you're looking plan view is a bird's eye view looking down elevation be street view looking on as you would see it I think having the elevations would be very helpful to make an analysis of how much impact that change would make and and I believe that ex excuse me the public comment period has been closed I believe um, planning director store is asking you to include that comment in your recommendation to mm -hmm. the Planning Commission very good <laughs> okay is would somebody like to try and take a stab this is gonna be an interesting one to write a motion there's a lot of pieces to it yeah well um, I, I could certainly give it a shot <laughs> Mr. Johnson <laughs> we'll, we'll leave you to see how you do okay well uh, yeah I've got Wendy here so 
Um, I uh, would like to set, uh, make a motion that we um, send the Planning Commission uh, our, uh, our approval of the demolition plan as it's presented. Uh, the tree replacement uh, plan is a one-to-one -one replacement. Uh, the landscape plan as submitted and uh, the only thing other than uh, that we haven't really discussed is I'd also like to add that we suggest the Planning Commission uh, address the um, bicycle parking um, on the property and I'm, I'm I, and another thing we didn't discuss and if we don't need it I won't add it but um, is this going to be city garbage waste management or are there going to be cans there individual uh, garbage cans in the garages okay so we don't have to worry about garbage uh, uh, structure um, and that um, the Planning Commission uh, consider looking at uh, the um, the ideas of the Sinesta Village uh, group about the uh, slight um, turning of the of the homes to lessen the impact of uh, what they perceive to be um, you know a problem with the the view and the sunlight um, and their their enjoyment of of their space as well and if I may help try to help I'm probably no, won't no, no. <laughs> but that uh, you would in encourage um, Sinesta villages to maybe to provide some type of yes. elevation plan, not just a site plan on that. Yes, yes. And if they, Sinesta villages, uh, would like to further that uh, argument to uh, provide uh, necessary um, views and, and uh, elevations that help to um, show that part to the Planning Commission so that they get a better understanding of where you're coming from. Can we try and condense that down? Wendy, is there a way to do it? I mean, can you do it a motion that's that long, or what would be beneficial? Can we do it in a, like a bullet point format? Okay, sure, that you... So, uh, the way I see it is we've, we've made a consensus agreement that we agree with the demolition of the existing structure. We agree with the Arborist Report as long as the trees are replaced at a one-to-one -one ratio or greater. Um, we prefer the split design with the no thoroughfare with the green space in between. We suggest that Sonesta provide some elevations of their alternative arrangement of the, the I guess that's the mm -hmm. south facing units. And we'd like to include some bicycle storage. And go ahead, Commissioner Moore. Um, I'd also like to recommend that they stick to the two designs rather than the three designs, possibly eliminating the mission style from the from the homes. Okay. Does that work for you, Wendy? Yeah. Yes. Would someone like to second that? I second. All right. I'll do a roll call vote. We'll start off with um, Commissioner Meserve. Oh, he can't vote. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> uh, uh, Commissioner Blattner, thumbs up. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Amar. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Chair Cormany. Aye. Thank you, the motion passes 4-0. Okay. Okay. So the mission passes. And since this is a special meeting, there's no further items for discussion. Is that correct? I don't have any issues update. Just to state that we are scheduled to have a, a regular design review and historic preservation commission meeting on the 15th, I believe. The okay. Hang on, hang on. So with that, I'd like to say this meeting is formally adjourned at 7:54. Okay. We have the